One of Maine's oldest institutions is arguably one of its most essential. The University of Maine began as a small school almost 160 years ago. Today, the University of Maine system has seven campuses from Fort Kent to Portland. And the leaders of that system say they've been making big changes that are starting to pay off. 207's Don Kerrigan talked with them on the campus where he got his own start. <laughs> yes, in fits and starts, Rob. Thanks very much. It's always fun to go back to campus to see what's changed and what hasn't. But the whole university system has a lot happening. And the people leading that system tell us those changes are essential for the future of Maine. On a perfect October day, the mall at the University of Maine is what a college campus should be, a place of beauty and for some, rich memories. And this place set you on the, on the launching ramp for your career. It did. Right? You too. Well, it did, yes. Fifty-some years ago, um, Trish Riley and I were students at what we then called UMO. She was head of student government. I was the news reporter for the campus radio station. All these years later, I'm still reporting. She is chair of the University System Board of Trustees. There's something special about this place, you know, that sort of speaks to you about the state of Maine. The seven campus system has endured a tough few years with the COVID pandemic, enrollment declines and cost increases. But Chancellor Daniel Malloy says this fall, things are looking brighter. I think we're up about 850 students or so, and then that'll also be uh, edited when we have the next semester. That is spread over a total system of more than 25,000 students. But for the first time in years, they say each campus has more students, some in person, some online. Some of that growth is driven by new programs. Some of that growth is driven by a better way to recruit students and get them to, to come to us. A, a lot of it's around the issue of affordability, particularly for our main students. The chancellor and the board chair say they held the line on in-state tuition as long as they could, but had to finally raise it 3% the last two years. Still, they argue the university is a good deal. Tuition and room and board are on average $22,000 a year. More than three quarters of students at the University of Maine at our alma mater get financial aid, free, not loans, financial aid that brings that cost down by half compared to the Bates, Bowden, Colby's which are in the $80,000 or even the other privates which are at least twice our costs make us the value proposition. The state of course has also taken the step of offering free tuition at community colleges. Some thought that might be a threat to the university. But the chancellor says he wasn't worried. What's going to happen eventually is more students are going to get an associate degree. Uh, and eventually more students will transfer into our system. And that's what we're enjoying right now. At the same time, the two leaders say the campus has had to embrace online learning, which exploded because of the pandemic, and now just keeps growing. What I keep reminding everybody is, you can't tell someone how they're going to take a product. They're going to tell you how they're going to consume the product. And that's true of cereal, uh, it's true of soups, and it's true of higher education. None of this has come without some pain. The chair and the chancellor say they've had to make cuts in places, close some buildings, and look for more ways to save money. The board is keenly interested in efficiency. We do, we are balancing our budget. We've been absolutely clear about wanting to get better efficiencies in energy, we're getting them, and taking out space that we no longer use. It, that might be nice to have, but not essential. What we're trying to do is to be as efficient as we can, and we are far more efficient today than we were just a few years ago. But the chancellor says the system still needs more funding from the state for renovations and investments like the two-year-old engineering building at Orno, where we met. 30 million in private donations, 50 million from the state for what is a nationally known educational program. I think engineering is a premier program. I think our nurse program is a premier program. I think our teaching uh, preparation is a, a premier program. We, we train the most nurses, we train the most teachers, we train uh, the vast majority of engineers who are employed in Maine at this very moment. Um, and we understand that that's our obligation. We have to help grow uh, Maine's uh, uh, economy. But as Maine has struggled to find workers in a wide range of jobs, 
There has been lots of talk that many young people don't really need a four-year college education. On the campus where we studied more than 50 years ago, Trish Riley said she thinks the benefits of college go beyond classroom and even career. Careerism is very important. I mean, we're a part of the economic development of Maine. That's, of course, what the work is. But the critical thinking skills, the opportunity to sort of broaden your own horizons in a world where we're so polarized, to learn how to understand differences and deal with them, it's part of what a higher education should be. And I think, I, th I know we provide that. Yeah. Is that a hard message to sell to the people who are writing the checks? You bet. They will keep sending that message and making those arguments. At the same time, they look for ways to control costs and still educate the thousands of young minds that hold Maine's future. And the chancellor says that over the last two decades, the university system, Rob, has graduated 100,000 students. That's a lot populating Maine. And earlier today at UMaine in Orno, they broke ground for another new engineering building. This one they're calling the Factory of the Future, paid for largely by federal government. All right. Thank you, Don. Huh?